Hello everybody. How are we all doing? I am Loomis and we're back to Pokemon Blue Monolock. Uh, normal type challenge. For anyone who's not caught this before, the uh, basic rules of the challenge are that we can only catch normal type Pokemon, we can only catch one of each line, and any that faint are gone forever. So we've got a limited number of Pokemon to get through the whole game with, and they're all normal. Last time we cleared Victory Road, and the only thing remaining is the Elite Four, so uh, we're going to be starting this one out with a bit of a grind, getting our levels up, and then later on tonight we'll be facing the Elite Four themselves. I'm going to trundle in here and see what the, uh, the XP is looking like in Victory Road. When I inevitably get disillusioned with it, we'll probably go back to Seafoam. Everybody to 55 at least. Should be a reasonable number to go in at. So assuming things go don't go catastrophe catastrophically wrong. Catastrophic. Catastrophic. Yes. Should be able to wrap this up tonight. This is the problem with Victory Road. Surprisingly high number of low level Pokemon, and they're like unevolved forms that give rubbish XP. Don't level up from that. You look like a jerk. One actually gets a little sick of the bike theme, replacing all the regular music. And you're just using it to wander around and get into fights faster. For at least a space pixie who has a good variety of moves, this is a decent training spot. such a disappointing amount of XP. Uh, that Golbat was a significantly lower level and gave almost twice as much XP. That is a poor showing on it. Now, and now I'm getting nothing but onyxes. I've called them out, I guess. I mean, at least they're not level 24 Geodudes, but... The issue remains. These Golbats seem to be the best source of XP. More of these, please. Probably if we can find a Graveler, that would do more. They don't seem to be very common. you can encounter my choke in this area, which is 
I mean, it's probably good XP, but it's still less than ideal. Probably have to swap to one of the flying types for that. is a final form, and Graveler is uh, a middle form, technically, but still, I would have thought... And it comes to something when the uh, best XP source you can find is Golbats. as well. At least the, the gold bats are relatively common. I'm gonna explain that to a better Pokemon. You have to do st introduce Steelix just to fix you. There's something not very inspiring about them. I guess that they're obviously just a souped up Onyx because Onyx doesn't live up to the hype. Probably just psychic lows and one shot it, but it makes me nervous. It would probably strike first, it would be super effective. Space Pixie is more special defense than physical.
Yes, that was a fairly mixed bag sleep wise. I mean, mostly I just got to bed. I just. Well, I got to bed on time, but I got to sleep really, really late. So let me try, try to fall asleep, and it wasn't the smoothest sleep, so I don't. Felt too rubbish to get up when my alarm went off. I was stuck in bed for a couple more hours until I could until I didn't feel dizzy. Maybe I ended up oversleeping. I think I did to be honest. I slept way later than I planned to, but that's mostly because I I mostly got me the same amount of sleep, I think. Generic rubbish night. It's slightly under the weather lately, maybe that's affecting it, but. There we go. Closing up. a bit of a sniffle, but it's never become like a full-on cold, it just seems to be lingering annoyingly. I feel like I'm over the worst of it, but I'm still not sleeping quite right. When you don't sleep right, your immune system goes all wonky, so we'll see. Sea foam for some of them. Yes, give me those gall bats. to one-shot things with, uh, payday. To get us some money for healing items and such. Just clap on space, Pixie. Classic Geo dude, always hitchhiking. What's out of bubble beams?
How do you low kick a bird? Like, has it, has it landed? Do they take off specifically only while earth attacks are going on? I mean, probably, I mean, in the case of Dodrio, presumably they do. Because they're flightless. They just jump really high. You got the front next. Let's see if you can outwit an onyx. Turns out you can. I'm a little bit surprised. and we'll level up a bit faster. This rock type maybe still puts you below a mid tier Pokemon. Beams and suddenly all the gold bats take a hike. Go figure.
Venom are surprisingly the scariest thing here. Easily underestimated, I guess. this run. It's been a pretty good run. Yeah, this is still the normal type run. Probably gonna face the Elite Four tonight. <laughs> We've completed our first mono lock. Yeah, the, uh... The birds are normal slash flying, so they're, they're still valid. If things are dual type, they just have to have one of their types be normal. It's not just pure normal types. For whatever reason, they... For whatever reason, there's pretty much no pure flying types in Pokemon. I think there's two now, but those are like really late ones. Much later generations. All the early flying types were flying and something else. <laughs> yeah, you tuned in for the final episode, that's the most important part. Have to go early? Oh. Hope you don't miss the Elite Four. You gotta be up in the morning. Is that when you're setting up to travel? Do we have any paralyzed heels? A bunch of four stars, I'm not sure. Oh, four heels, but those are expensive. Maybe we'll just swap you out. Train Tilly here. Oh, you're doing first aid training, nice. A different side, okay. So you've got a bit of a trek to get there. I really need to do first aid training again. My uh, my certificate's expired. I don't know if they're doing first aid courses for civilians. Like non work courses at the moment, or the quarantine. Health and safety would probably uh, have some questions about a disparate group getting together in the same room and kissing the same dummy. I mean, I know they, they already wiped it down. I mean, they. They put the uh, mouth guard thing over it anyway. But even so. And you have to do all the face-to-face, the -face, like the, uh, the bandages and stuff. 
I was getting pretty close to a stranger. Two-day course. Until last night you had to be in a certain... Oh, so you had the, the first day of your course today, and then you got it again tomorrow, I see. <laughs> yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. Nothing's worse for sleep than knowing that you need to be up the next morning. If you know you have to go to sleep early, then you're guaranteed not to do it. Yeah, fair enough. Get an early night, make sure you're well rested for tomorrow. Take it very seriously then. That's good to hear. Yes, I worry that if I try to look for a civilian co for like, you know, one that's not sponsored by a workplace. I keep saying civilian is not really the right word. But they they won't want to go through that much effort for randos. I should really have renewed my birth aid sticker code a few years ago, to be honest. Like, it lasts for three years, but you're sp but they encourage you to renew it every year. But... Life well, got kind of crap and I didn't get around to doing it. And then the quarantine hit and now I can't. But yeah, I'm glad that they've got a, a safe environment for you. Yeah, yes, I imagine you have to do like to uh, like bandage up people's arms and stuff, make slings. That's what we had to do at mine. Hey then, it doesn't matter if you're a rando or not. I guess so. Maybe they're actually doing all these courses and things, and I'm just getting it in my head that they wouldn't do them, and not looking in the first place. Might be better to wait. Yeah, I get. Yeah, I guess that's the thing, right? If you don't have to, do, if you don't have to do it, then you shouldn't. If you've got a. I mean, the existence of first aid courses is a good reason to to have first aid training. But yeah, if you don't need to go places, don't right now. That's pretty fair. Yeah, there's no pressing reason to do it now. It's just it's September time and schools are starting up and it's not only around this time that I think Hmm, maybe I should check if the local council ever got around to doing useful courses again. But I think, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe not this year. <laughs> Can save me the effort? Are they not? Seven percent chance they didn't. I like those odds. I 
They used to do so many good, interesting courses. Like, they did a whole bunch of cool ones back, back in the day. Yeah, and then all the budget cuts, and now all they teach is basic math, basic English. If you're lucky, maybe they speak teach French or German. I mean, I wouldn't mind learning another language. But French and German both have gendered nouns, and heck that. Nobody's got time for gendered nouns. I don't, I don't care what gender bridges and moons are in your language. I've got things to do today. Yeah, if there's a more interesting language available, I'd probably go for that, but I don't know that there will be. Also, Quiet Night, but... You're supposed to be taking the day off. <laughs> I haven't seen SHB in a while, Lady Mia. No, that that uh that is the command. But SHV is on holiday. You don't seem to be working at the moment. If there's another Japanese class, that would be awesome. I'd jump straight onto that, but... Failing that, I'd quite like to learn Swedish, because... Oh heck, any of the languages in that reason, region, I guess. But, I don't know, I seem, to, I seem to know quite a few people from that area these days. Seems like that, that region is very popular, is very active on the internet. Also, Sweden just seems like Sweden, Norway, they both seem like just really nice places, and I, I figure there's a 50% chance that Britain will literally be under the ocean before the next election, you know, the way things are going. Things are a bit of a mess here. I would like to have an escape plan, and that probably involves knowing a foreign language reasonably well. Although I have been eyeing up Scotland. I figure there's a pretty good chance they're going to declare independence in the next couple of years. So that they can get back into the EU. Planning on escaping to Sweden? It's, it's on my mind, it's a possibility. They have mountains! Mountains, Gandalf! Like, I'm not exactly looking at houses there or anything, but... I mean, it's, it's heavy politics stuff, but I look at the way that that Britain is going and I, I, I worry. Like, I, I remember in history class reading about World War II, about Germany and the build to World War II and thinking, why didn't people just leave? Get the heck away from the, the whole mess. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's on my mind at the moment. Britain or England? Uh, Britain? The British government as a whole? 
Like I say, I think there's a good chance that Scotland is going to leave in the next couple of years to rejoin the EU. So if, if that does happen, then Scotland would be a good place to move to because I already speak the language. More or less. But otherwise... I don't, yeah. Sweden seems like one of the nicest places in the, the EU. But I, obviously I don't speak the language, and would be unlikely to be allowed to move there if I didn't. Like I say, I'm not, not exactly drawing up immediate plans, but I'm looking at the situation and thinking, what if things get really bad though? Because they might. to get into, my savings would be worth a lot less there. But you also get paid more there, and like w wages are, h are a lot higher there, and people work less hours. So that kind of compensates the, uh, the fact that things are more expensive there. But yeah, it'd be hard to get off the ground over there. Especially when I don't really have usable skills. Yeah, exactly. People mostly didn't just leave because it's not an easy thing to do. And I probably wouldn't be able to do it either, but I don't know. It'd be nice to have the option. Being able to speak uh, some other languages would be a good first stop. And also, just learning languages is a, is a good thing, right? I can communicate better with more people. And they, they say it's one of the best things for, like... In terms of, like, raw brain power. Just exercising your brain. Learning a language is, is probably the best thing. Helps stave off a lot of uh, mental illnesses and the like by keeping your brain active. best things for being generically smart. Ugh, these Venomoth and their stun spores are ruining my day. from country to country, I mean, from a poorer country to a richer country. Your savings aren't going to be worth as much, so it's going to be hard to find somewhere to live. And you probably don't have as good an education, so getting a job would be difficult. I don't know. I just don't want to be a hypocrite. tonight and see what I can get. But I suppose also they cost, they 
cost quite a bit of money and I'm, you know, largely unemployed. Try Duolingo, I have heard good things about it. Like, I'm, I'm slightly hesitant with apps because just. When you're learning a language, there's no substitute for actually just talking to somebody in that language, right? Like, I tried to study Japanese on my own. After the after my course closed down, and it was very hard to actually pick up new things beyond that point without somebody to practice with. I found it was more struggling to hold on to old knowledge rather than learning anything new. So getting a, a class would be ideal, but. Duolingo is probably a very good practice tool if you're also doing classes. And I'm sure it's better than nothing as well. So maybe I, maybe I should look into it and just see if... Maybe I should just see if I can pick up the basics. If I can learn a few of the basics now, then if I started doing a, a course in a, a couple of years' time, then... You know, I'd have some ground to start on. worth looking into. I suppose, I, as I said, I do know a few people who speak Swedish. I could, I could, if I picked up the basics from Duolingo, maybe I could just chat with them. Of course, and see if they've got anything good at the moment. Yeah, I'm probably not optimistic because. I mean, all the courses disappeared five minutes after the Tories came into power, and they've continued to be in power for like. many. for quite a few years now. I doubt new courses have appeared. And also, you know, quarantine. They might be worth a look. Getting the motivation together. Open land don't seem to do Swedish. They do other languages though. Any exciting other languages? What what language? What language would you learn, given the option? If you could magically have one evening free a week, and, uh... And any language in the world, a, a free course to attend on that free evening, but what language would you go for? You actually know a tiny bit of Korean, right? Not really. 
Yeah. Not, not exactly survival Korean, unless you get into a street fight, but still. You know how to say judo chop in Korean, which is not a Korean martial art. Mm. I mean, it's probably taught there. It's not an English martial art either. And we, plenty of people over here know it. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know if I can name any Korean martial arts other than the Taekwondo, which was too, too on the nose. To relearn German without the pressure of school like then. That's also true. I have thought that if I had to study German now, I'd probably get along better with it than I did in school. It is mostly gendered nouns that puts me off from learning French or German. Because I never did French at school, so that'd be a completely fresh language that's wild, wildly, yeah, widely available. But... Just... I remember getting so agitated with German when I was younger. All the dirty das... Ein... Eins... Einer... You gotta remember it for every single noun. And it doesn't mean anything! Oh, Adds nothing to the conversation. Genders are different in different languages. It's not like I can learn the genders of all the nouns for German and then start learning French and apply that over, right? It's I'd have to learn completely new ones for French if I did that later, and not get the two muddled up. No, what are you doing with your languages and why? Italian. Italian might not be bad, yeah. I don't know, I would assume Italian is also gendered. They probably started it. So that would also be an interesting language. Spanish? Like, Spanish is one of the most widely spread languages. If you learn Spanish, you can probably be understood in a, a lot of places around the world. If you speak both English and Spanish, there's probably not a lot of people out there that you can't talk to. Yeah, be a very practical language, right? Any of those four would be extremely useful and practical, but I'm pretty sure all four of them use gendered nouns. So I'm extremely hesitant. The book was way better than mine. So... <laughs> given, your, given the choice of languages to learn, you'd either go for Italian so you can read a book, or Russian so you can read a book. You do talk about Wolfhound a lot. 
Was the book, the book was never translated? I mean, Russia is also a, a big language, and it's spoken a lot of places out of Russia. Norellon knows a lot of Russian for talking to people from Belarus, and uh, I think they also speak Russian. Uh, do they also speak Russian in Ukraine? That is, that is fair. That is fair. I mean, I don't have to convince me of that. I, I got it. I got into learning Japanese so I could play video games in their original language. Because I read a really interesting article about the differences between the English and Japanese translations of Final Fantasy VI. So yeah, I guess I can get behind the uh, learning languages to study their media kind of thing. Watch that film sometime if you like it so much. I don't. I don't suppose uh, Netflix has this super obscure Russian film, does it? <laughs> Have the DVD though. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty sweet. Can borrow it eventually. Well, don't don't worry. I don't I don't I promise not to hold on to it for ten years and then return it, having only watched it as far as the point where they leave Midgar. <laughs> Would be unconscionable. Battlestar Galactica to finish watching. Everything got kind of stupid, and we haven't, and we never got around to uh, watching anything after the first season. And it was super good. I want to, I want to know what happens. After quarantine is over, we need to set up like a movie night or something. over Discord now, now they've got the internal stream kind of deal. But I don't know if everybody's internet would stand up to it. Maybe it's something we should try sometime. I mean you're watching this stream okay.
<laughs> That's the real problem, is finding time, as always. Instead of a movie night where we watch TV shows. That's how we'll catch up on Battlestar Galactica. Can we hit the target please? Thank you. I watched uh, Princess Mononoke the other day. So I found it on Netflix. They do have some famous anime films on there. I went digging. Yeah, never seen that one before. And it's it's really good, but it's also really melancholy. As is, like, Studio Ghibli's signature style, and I, I, I know going into it to expect that sort of thing, but... Yeah, the character stuff in it was really good. He kind of agreed with every character, even while they were all fighting each other. Definitely one I'd recommend. Characterization. World building. I don't need I don't need a story, I just need an annotated guide to the places and people in a setting. That's where my interest is. Sure, what level we're going in at. Probably going to be more of what level can we reach before we uh, confront the Elite Four. Maybe I'll do the Elite Four at, uh, at 10 o'clock and we'll see how high a level we can get before then. I would like it to be at least 55 for the Elite Four. So I think there you go, they're, they're like 50 to 65 in levels. We're not gonna have any type advantages this time though. It's gonna be tougher than our typical Nuzlocke experience. Like, I think we got a pretty good team here, but. We'll see when we get there. Good grief. 
Mm -hmm. Not only was Wolfhound never translated into English, but it was never actually written in Russian. Found the author's web page. Turns out they wrote the book by hand and only sold one copy to the guy who made the film. Did the guy ever write any more books, or was that his one? It was 2010 when his last book came out. Shop page is completely blank. Okay. So it's not even selling the book anymore? Translated. Ah, fair enough. You think she's probably retired from writing? that I use for Streamlabs is called Stickers by Dot. Let's you put like displays on the screen and stuff. And uh, that broke recently and I had a look at the, uh, the news page and stuff and they're like, yeah, it's uh, it's currently not working. We're going to fix it, but we're not we're not sure what's broken because the last time we did anything with it was a year ago and it's just been running on automatic for that entire time. Maybe just turned it on and left it alone. quick break and I'll be back with you in a moment. Right, I'm back. Oh, so she started out as a translator, okay. Yeah, that's cool. She translated the Robin Hood books? I enjoyed those a lot. At least I enjoyed the, uh, the Assassin Trilogy and the Golden Fool Trilogy. Actually, she wrote an another trilogy, didn't she, with, this with those characters? I didn't like Life's Ship Trade as much. Which at the, t at the time was marketed as the second of the Farsia trilogies. Between, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, at the time the, it was uh, the Assassin trilogy, the Live Ship Traders trilogy, and the Golden Fall trilogy were the Farsia books. But I think now she's. They've decided that the uh, Live Ship Traders is officially a spin off, and there's now a third. Farsia Trilogy, is that right? Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, as, as I'm saying, I've not read the uh, latest trilogy. But I, I really enjoyed the Golden Fall trilogy, so... Fine. Duck! Fine. Duck! Yeah, I would, would recommend those. Maybe better than the Assassin's trilogy, even. Live Chip Traders, on the other hand, I would say is thoroughly worth a skip. Very different to the other books, the, the other two trilogies I've read, and uh, didn't really work out. It turns out that uh, she has a, a real gift for writing, but only when she writes for that one character. She can only write books about this. Anyone else and it goes horribly wrong. I don't know. I should read more of her books and find out. read that one. I think that's uh, that's like a completely different trilogy. I think it's even I don't think it's even set in the same universe. I think she's got the mage books and the soldier books. Which I don't think are set in the Farseer universe, but I'm I'm not sure. I think those were actually her first books, weren't they? The Soldier Trilogy and the Mage Trilogy were like independent things before she made it big with the uh, the Assassin Trilogy. should do. Maybe find more time to read. I've actually not done much reading over quarantine. Like I used to I used to always read on my lunch break and whenever I was out and about I'd read on my e-reader. So I took that everywhere. Don't do as much reading when I stay at home. And occupied with stuff instead. Most of the reading I've been doing is when I've been cooking, or when I've been sitting out with the rabbits. So I have, uh... main thing I'm reading at the moment is Pale, the latest Wild Bow work. It's a web serial. And I'm probably just about keeping up with the pace at which it's being written. The problem with being a Wild Bow fan, if you want to read other books, you better be dedicated to spending a lot of time reading, because uh, Wild Bow writes at a ferocious rate. I'm not trying to distract you. Here, l l let me help you. Read, read out, uh, read out a few paragraphs, and I'll, uh, I'll check them for grammar. Yeah, is it still in the next editing class? Taking it into a uh, a 
workable state before you rip it apart with those big changes you are talking about. Just using stronger moves against the Dugong. That's a big boy. I won't help me out to get into it here. How how far in did you get? Because I I will a bunch of lemonade. Where'd it all go? I had some super potions as well. Hmm. Oh, well. Yeah, worm, worm does start quite slow. Takes a couple of chapters to get really good. Oh, maybe, if you have trouble reading on a phone. I started out on my PC, but... My uh, e-reader gave up the ghost recently, and I, I've just switched to reading on my phone. I take it everywhere anyway, so it's just like... It's one less device to carry around. And it means I can read web serials without downloading them. And I've got an e-reader app, so all of my actual books I can get on there. I have trouble paying attention to anything that's not on a screen, you know? It's a big one, right, Mia? Main characters changing genders and all sorts. I'm looking forward to seeing the end result. that uh, when you said you were changing the gender of one of the main characters, I immediately knew which character you were talking about. I mean, it, it says something. I'm not sure what it says, but it says something. The things you thought were necessary might not be. Okay. We've got some ideas that work with them. I'm not sure which other things you're planning to change. I know you said you had some uh, big changes in mind to try and satisfy some of my criticisms. And, like, You know, I, I pointed out these things to help you improve, but if you're trying to make me happy, you will fail. I will find new things to complain about, you can't stop me. stuff can be worked with and maybe some of it can hold. I look forward to, uh, to seeing it anyway. It sounds like I'm not going to see this draft.
Oh, okay. Sounds like big new stuff. This character, I don't think... This character didn't exist in the draft that I read. to spend a lot of time on their own are probably, I imagine, are very difficult to write. I think the, uh, the Hunger Games series does that really well. I say the series, especially the first one. The, the main character of the first Hunger Games book spends a lot of time on her own. impressive that the narrative works so well with that. <laughs> okay. But on the one hand, it, it would work better if he couldn't communicate with the spirit, and it was this alien menacing presence. On the other hand, they get along really well and it works. Yeah, that's, uh... I mean, what if he talks to it all the time, and it talks back in ways... Not, not with words, but with sensations, images, feelings, all kinds of strange stuff? And it has to be sort of interpreted? going that way. Uh, at first he doesn't really understand most of the stuff that's coming out, but starts to get a, a feeling for it. about this character or anything, I'm just throwing ideas out there. I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to do... <laughs> I'm here to be a sounding board, I guess, more than anything. Maybe things will make more sense once you've explained them to me, but I'm trying, I'm trying to feedback. It, it really helps to have somebody to talk to when you're finding out this stuff, I think. Even if they don't have anything to contribute, it just feels clear in your head once you've told somebody. I help Badger with his D&D quite a bit by sitting there and listening to him ramble about ideas. And I contribute absolutely nothing, and then at the end he says, Thank you, you've been a big help. the real mythology behind the fire spirits. Okay. Is that something that'll come together more as you write the character? Well, I mean, I guess you're writing the character now. If it's in this current draft. I guess maybe think about the fire spirit that you've you've got, and figure out what what's your favorite bits, and see if you can weave those into the the fire world. And then see what other interesting ideas about the fire world spring into your mind, and how you can add those into the next draft. 
Spend 15 minutes sat down, meditating, thinking, fire people, fire people. Imagine what stuff means to them. I see, it actually have great XP, do they? It's like 300 odd. Maybe I've been too sour on the uh, on Victory Road. Because of its low level and evolved stuff, giving like 200. This isn't that much higher. And there was the evolved ones there that were giving like a thousand. The problem is these Pokemon don't have the right movesets to take down Onyxes and things. There's a huge variety of stuff over there and it's hard to find for a Pokemon to match all of them. Actually, he's got nothing that would affect an Onyx or a Graveler. So you have to do a lot of swapping out. minutes. It's closer than I thought it would be. And if we can get everybody up to level 55. It seemed like such an easy goal earlier. So we'll get everybody to 55 and we'll, you know, if there's enough time left over, maybe we'll try for 60. And the time has moved on quickly. Payday for the leveling because that's more potions and things to take in. But once we get into the, uh, we should definitely get some lemonade. Strongest move for actual combat, even if it does make us rich. And riches buy lemonade. I'm yawning a lot. Hopefully, I'll sleep a bit better tonight. Thank you. 
No, I don't have any grapes. Setting myself up for a punchline here. and says, hey, you got any grapes? I think I know this joke. I know it as a duck walking into a bar and asking for sandwiches, but I imagine it's the same joke. Walks, the duck keeps walking into the bar asking for sandwiches and the barman keeps telling him that they don't serve sandwiches there and chases the duck out. And after like the fifth time, the, the barman says, If you ask me for sandwiches one more time, I'm going to nail your beak to the bar. And the ne next day, the, uh, the duck walks in and says, Hey, got any nails? And the barman says, No. And the the duck says, got any sandwiches? for drill pack is like an upward slash. They pecs normally go down? It's not really a pack animation at all, to be honest. And for grapes that eliminate sand is the only punchline you need. <laughs> Walks up to a lemonade stand and says, "Got any grapes?" Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of a joke in, all in of itself, right? You don't need any more than that. Agility. I think you're already going to be faster than most things. I'll pass. to a party a while back, and before I could go to the party I needed to get an outfit for it. So I went to get an outfit, but there was a huge queue at the store. There was a, a huge line of people waiting, and I had to line up for ages to get the, the clothes that I wanted. 
But then I needed some snacks to take with me for the party, so I went down around to the uh, supermarket to get some snacks, and I picked out some ones I liked. By the tills, it was a huge line. So I had to line up for ages to get the snacks that I needed. And then I had to get the bus to where the party was, and there was a, a, a huge line of people there as well to get on the bus, and I had to wait ages there. And when I got to the party, like, people were just queued up outside, you know? It was being introduced one by one, and it was taking forever, and you know, I, I had to line up for ages to get into the party. And by the time I got there, I was pretty thirsty. So I, I went over to get some punch from the, uh, you know, the punch table and get myself a drink. But there was no punchline. That's Badger's joke that I shamelessly stole. I mean, he didn't come up with it. It's, a, it's an old joke, but he tells that one all the time. I do have a secret fondness for meta punchline jokes. Yeah, that's already a red flag. That's a clear sign that a joke is happening. <laughs> hey guys! <laughs> I. <laughs> I went to a party the other week. favorite old Penny Arcade comics has uh, one of the guys busting on the other with a, a frisbee and he's like it's a, a, it's a balmy 30 degrees outside me and the boys are gonna pay, play some frisbee and they stare at each other for a, a long while and they both crack up laughing oh man you almost had me there the frisbee was a nice touch I had to ask the guy at the store what it was called My feelings on parties. We are not getting these two to level 55 before uh, before it's time to go do the Elite Four. To be fair, this happens every time we do a, a playthrough of this. I'm like, yeah, we'll get a few levels just to uh, make sure we're at a, a suitable point for the Elite Four, you know? Won't take us that long to grind up a little bit. And then a couple of hours later, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've gained like two levels this entire time. And now I've got to fight the Elite Four. All I've, all I've got is a level 13 Ratata. <laughs> How are we going to get out of this one? You know, we haven't game over yet, so, uh... <laughs> the Endless Pursuit of Challenge. I have only wiped in a Nuzlocke once, and it was, uh, it wasn't a stream. It was Ruby Sapphire. Yeah. Champion of the Elite Four wiped out my whole squad. That was a rough fight. Yeah, just was not ready for him. 
He has a, uh, what's it called? A Metagross, I think? The rocky, spidery looking thing with the psychic powers? I think it was that one. That, that thing hacked me up. I can barely scratch him. Yeah, I suppose so. You, know, you expect the champion to put up a decent fight. But yeah, I kind of stumped up until that point, and then I hit that one Pokemon, and I was like, there is nothing I can do here. This thing is chewing me up. I did get some Pokemon out of the uh, PC, though, and train up a second squad. I beat him the second time. With a Starmie, actually, as I remember. We're looking at Staryu. Starm Starmie is such an overpowered Pokemon, which is the main reason I hadn't used it in the first place. But I broke it out for that second time, and it pretty much soloed the entire Elite Four and the Champion. Starmie has stats through the roof. And it can learn just about everything as well. If we ever do a water type minor lock, I guess it's going to be the star of the squad. Well, either Stami or Slowbro, because both are really strong. Stami can learn Thunderbolt, and Slowbro can learn Flamethrower, so we've got access to all the types. some items and we'll take on the Elite Four. Are you Spook? Because I'm Spook. stick around for the finale. But yeah, if you gotta be up early tomorrow, you gotta be up early tomorrow. Can't be helped. <laughs> Going to miss the Elite Four. <laughs> I mean, I suppose I could, uh... Maybe I could wrap up for tonight, and then next week we'll get, to le get everybody to level 55 and face the Elite Four. Kind of quiet tonight. I think you might be the only person watching just now, so uh, wouldn't be that much of a waste. Skype and Discord, though. I want to hear from you. Even if you can't make it to streams. Next week there'll be a few more people around to see the finale. I can bill it as the, the Elite Four. Can you come in, Kelly? Hello? Probably on Skype. Okay. Cool. 
Hold on, hold on a moment, wait a minute. I gotta get the toy up. Damn it. You can go there in a moment. I just need you to show your face. Nah. You're that PR officer. You're the, uh, you're the face of this company. Ah, oh, come here. Oh, say hi, Tilly Cat. Lady Meow says hi. I've been waiting to see you. She stuck around all evening for the sole purpose of seeing you. It's the only reason she's here. <laughs> Discord is so public. I mean, it's all people from the stream, and it's mostly regulars that chat there. But don't forget that we've got the uh, private mod chat, if you ever want to talk to those of us you know in a little more privacy. Nobody ever uses the private mod chat. I would drill pegs anyway. <laughs> she is, she's a beautiful floof. She makes me very happy. The only color on the screen. I am otherwise monochrome. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I can, <laughs> I can see that. She stands out. <laughs> She's climbing on the spare bed now. I think that's where she's spending the night. Toxic this thing, so apparently I can't hit it with a Fury attack. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay, so we need to get out of here and replenish our moves anyway. with any of that. She's a real beauty. <laughs> I don't know if you saw her on Discord, she saved me from burning the house down the other day. Was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday, actually. Put some, put some food in the oven and forgot about it. And, uh, like an hour later when my food starts burning, I'm sitting here at my computer and she jumps up on the desk, gets right in my face and starts howling. Because she can smell smoke and she wants me to go do something about it. Tilly, what's the, what's the deal? My oh my gosh! I'm watching downstairs and uh, opening <laughs> opening up the oven. There wasn't actually a fire, but my food was very burned. <laughs> so yeah, I'm lucky she was on point to tell me about that. Yeah, we got a little colour about the edges, haven't we? <laughs> and the flag occasionally. The, uh... Ob obviously one of them's the pride flag, if you don't know, the other one is the, uh... Well, the... The rainbow is the, uh, the gay pride flag, but also kind of the one that gets used for everything. And the other one is the asexual pride flag. Bit more specific. I felt like putting a, a little more stuff on there, to show my support. Yeah, Tilly saved the day. She's a good kitty. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without her.
Yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap up there myself, Lady Neo. Maybe about finishing a little early will help me fix my sleep as well. I'll call it a night here, and uh, next Monday we will only have a little bit of training to do, and then we can say, you know, going straight into the Elite Four, if we can get some people in. And yeah, you'll have to catch up on it on, on YouTube. It'll be the Elite Four episode. Yeah, you need a bigger here. treasure room. God nicked. <laughs> good night, Lady Mia. Thank you so much for the 300 bits. And yeah, good luck on your, your first aid practical. You got this. You can absolutely do it. <laughs> thanks for being here and thanks for keeping me company all night. Really enjoyed catching up. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna call it a night there as well. I'm gonna see if I can fix my sleep. And we'll, uh, we'll pick this up next time. So yeah, it's next week for the Elite Four. And I'll be back tomorrow when we'll be start starting a uh, new game for Terra Tuesday. We'll be playing SCP Containment Breach in the evening. Looking forward to it. I played it a tiny bit before, but th this was way back in beta. And it was like a very early release. So I think they've added a lot to it, so it's basically going to be a blind playthrough. And I, I liked what I saw all those years ago, so it should be good. <laughs> it's a bit of a, a spooky roguelike. Everything's slightly different each time, there's a different map, things are in different places, you gotta escape. It's a game that gives you a button to control when you blink. You know, what more, what more do you need to know? You know you're onto, onto something when, uh, when that's one of the conditions. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see how that goes tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, thanks again for being here. Thank you for watching and keeping me company. <laughs> and, uh, good luck with your first aid stuff and uh, enjoy your trip, Lady Meow. <laughs> Until next time, have a good night.